All right. So uh, this news is pretty fresh. This came out while we were recording. And uh, U.S. soccer is is hosting what's called a biobanding event in California with six California-based DA clubs, both on the, the boys' and the girls' side. Uh, so what the heck is biobanding again, Charlie? <laughs> uh, this is a really interesting concept uh, that I think I think should be implemented across the board, but we're not quite there yet. So I think every parent or coach that's listening to this probably has seen a game where there's one kid in the same age group who's a head and shoulders ahead of the other, literally in physically, terms of size, actually, yeah. physical size, or um, has had the growth spurt kick in a little sooner and is faster, stronger. Just the, those little uh, individual uh, irregularities in how kids grow, both physically and mentally. Um, Biobanding is a concept that it, that seeks to um, look a layer deeper, but beneath the age and see when kids, what kids' biological ages are, and try and pair them up uh, to compete against one another for for not only for more fairness for the kids, but for a better player evaluation and just an overall more coherent idea of what the level of this kid is, what their upside is. Because let's let's be honest. There's kids that can hang in there and that learn really good habits before the growth spurt. Christian Pulisic, if you ever see the, the picture that, that made the rounds when he first turned pro of an absolutely toothpick-legged, skinny little kid who had to learn how to be smarter and more, tactic, and more tactically aware, technically better than the bigger kids around him, right? And all too often, American soccer... P- plays up and favors the 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 early developers. Well, he goes uh, to the physically. Premier League. He's probably so. hoping they do some bio banding in some of those games, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. But so the so the federation uh, uh, foreign clubs have have dived into this. Some really good talent developers like Southampton are really full on board with the bio banding concept. The federation has done a couple of events. I think they're kind of feeling this out and trying to figure out what they can learn from it and if they can grow it. Uh, so we've got another event coming up in California here. I'm and I'm again I'm really hoping that everybody involved in it. Is getting a positive experience, is seeing the benefits, and maybe we can grow this idea because so much of youth soccer conversations, in my experience, are wasted on people arguing about someone's age or someone's playing up too far or not enough or someone's, you know, there's mismatches that, that seem to drive parents particular crazy, and, and this would be the next level, I think, the next evolution. Yeah, and just a couple other quick notes from the announcement from U.S. Soccer about this event it's being put on by the U.S. Soccer High Performance Department. And one of the quotes in the article is from Tom Hicks, who's the manager of that high performance department. And he actually talked specifically about the girls DA and that prior to their 2018 biobanding event, there had been no existing research about this on the girls' side. And the, the just introducing this initiative from U.S. Soccer is actually – um, kind of pioneering some education, some new policies and processes to improve player development across the DA and across the country in general. Uh, this weekend's event is going to be made up of players between the U14 and U17 age groups, and each club is putting together two teams, mixing up those rosters on a biological age, uh, you know, from from biological age standpoint. And they are they're actually being grouped by sports scientists from U.S. soccer. So they're helping all these clubs put together these these bio banded teams. So do you feel like we probably don't know, but what's U.S. soccer's real role in this? Is it a facilitator to try to educate the clubs uh, and they pick California because it's warm right now? Or is this some kind of an ID event well, that's going to lead to something? Southern California, obviously, they're doing it in the winter. It's probably probably has to do with that. And. Obviously, Southern California is just the ultimate hotbed pretty much for producing talent. So and they can play outside and, you know, in January, Um, they're actually going to have representatives from even some English Premier League clubs that are going to be on hand from Southampton and uh, Bournemouth. And they're going to be on hand to learn about this bio banding process in the United States and even, you know, share some of their own insights with some things that have already been implemented in England. This reminds me. This is a maybe I can drop a little bit of a tidbit that maybe of a value to to uh, to those out there listening. Um, one of the hottest arguments, one of the firestorms of of the past what ten years in USU soccer was the change of the birth year registration, right, and shifting, forcing the entire landscape to shift from a school year type age brackets to a to a birth year. 
Um, I've heard that with kind of a, ch- a little bit of a change of character, a change of mentality with the people who are running the Federation, at least on, on a slight level, uh, I've been given reasons to believe that, that, that they're taking a more open-minded approach to things, a more consensus-oriented approach. I'm he- hearing some quiet rumbles that, that it's possible that birth year age group stuff is going to be going to be brought up again or at least be reevaluated and possibly even a backtrack happen. But to me again, wouldn't it be great if we can get past this obsession with dates and ages and numbers on paper and and look at kids as where they really are in that moment in their development both individual and and technical in in the game. Uh, I'd love to see biobanding become the law of the land and again, I'm not sure it's the kind of thing that the federation can just impose. We all know that that those kind of Rulings by fiat don't go over well with the, the membership, understandably. But again, let's hope there's more and more of these events that, that add to the conversation and, and keep it moving forward. Well, you might have just broken some, maybe, I think I heard, I don't know, it's a possible, I can't I, con- I got a confirm. hedge because this is early, <laughs> this is early in the process. But yeah. uh, just, the, you know, if you think about uh, what a pain in the butt that that process was for so many people at the grassroots in terms of breaking up teams, forcing a whole new uh, registration approach. Uh, it's, it, it's utterly, I mean, again, maybe not one of the things get, that gets discussed the most on Twitter, but certainly one of the things that drives parents and coaches and administrators in the game crazy is, is was having to make that shift. So we'll, we'll see. Again, I think we can always look for ways to do things better uh, on, that, on that administrative side, and, uh, and I, I hope that there'll be some, some conversations, uh, uh, positive conversations ensuing in the year ahead. Well, I, I think it's a, a good topic uh, to, to remember to point out that the vast majority of the kids and the administrators that are involved in the sport in this country, you know, they really do just want to let the, the friends play. It's recreational soccer. And it's not about trying to figure out, you know, who the next Messi is right away. And, and, and we're and overthinking aligning these age groups, which is where most of the backlash came. It was from the, 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 the steadfast leagues, clubs, you know, that were like, what are you doing making us do all these changes when everything was just fine, just because you're trying to identify, you know, your regional player pool and that sort of thing. So to the extent of U.S. soccer being involved with it, you know what, just let them scout. They can figure out what it, what age somebody is to be eligible for a FIFA event. Other than that, let's just get the players playing together. So I would love to see them, there not be this one-size-fits-all, top-down approach to, to how youth clubs or leagues, but ultimately it goes back to why they used to have eight-year-old kids sign player cards because they were worried about the, the coach that games the system and shows up with the wrong kid to win some, some game in, in the middle of nowhere.